Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a first look at the Maneuver Group Fed Junkin. Uh, this is a new division available in the upcoming DLC Burning Baltics. As a disclaimer, Eugen has given me free access to the DLC. Massive thanks to them as always. Also, please remember this is an early preview and what you see may be subject to change. If you'd like to read the description on the right hand side, feel free to pause the video and take a look. Uh, but I'm going to be jumping straight on in as always. All right, let's start off by going into the recon tab. So yeah, we'll go through all of the units and uh, we'll put together a quick deck. But let's start off, of course, with the motorcycle. There it is again. <laughs> Four of them available in phase A in this one. I think that's less than normal. Interesting. Moving on to the sniper. The sniper can come in with a BA-20. That's very cool. I really like these BA-20s as little scout cars because they are armoured and they can provide a little bit of extra machine gun fire on enemy positions and the nice thing particularly on the soviet side with armored cars like this is the axis side infantry doesn't tend to have that many um like ptrs's or anything like that uh, at rifles yeah they don't have at rifles um so sometimes they'll have like panzer boxes but it's quite rare um, the only faction you're probably going to want to look out for is maybe Finland with the uh, the Lati. Um, so yeah, the BA-20 is a really good choice actually for just harassing enemy infantry. Uh, then we have access to the BA-10M in Phase A. Six of these available in Phase A. And the Konaya Razvitka, uh, which is the large 11-man squad. Recon squad with two submachine guns and nine rifles. Uh, no exciting transports for them, unfortunately. So a pretty small recon tab for Maneuver Group for Dunkin. Then there is the Infantry tab. So the Infantry tab is pretty standard by the looks of things. No real exciting new units here. Starting off though with the Sapelli PPSH. Uh, these can only come in with jeeps and W252s. Generally these aren't worth bringing in unless they allow you to bring in a nice half track or something with them because they just don't really have much power in the early game and this Panzerfaust doesn't quite have the range it needs to be powerful. Like if these were four PPSHs with maybe a PTRS that would be really cool. That would be a nice use of this squad. Uh, but next up we have the Avtocomrotis, the two-man squads. No grenade though, which is unfortunate, but only 15 points pop. Nice to spread around a little bit. Uh, easy to kill though with artillery. There is a card of the Chernos. These Chernos are decent because they just act as standard line infantry for the most part. 18 in phase A, 27 in phase B. Stroki, standard stuff. There are four cards of these available. Uh, you get nine in phase A, 18 in B, 27 in C. Got a lot of Stibbeckis to bring all of those in. So, yeah, plenty of room for Stroki in this deck. Then moving on, we have Stroki DT. Now, these are. We got two cards of these. And these are pretty interesting squads, actually. Three submachine guns, three SVTs, which are decent mid-range rifles and a DT machine gun plus Molotovs. So I think these will actually be pretty nice early game town fighting units because they have the ability to kind of shoot things at range if they need to uh, but also if an a, enemy unit approaches them they can like Molotov them out of the building and then mow them down with submachine guns. Like this is actually going to have a pretty pretty good use for town engagements in particular. It can be useful. It could be useful in in uh, forests maybe to support other infantry squads. Like if you mix a Staraki squad with a Staraki DT squad, that might be quite nice. Their availability is okay. Uh, six in A, twelve in B, eighteen in C. And the fact you get two cards of those is really nice. 
Uh, there is the Avtomats. These guys have 10 submachine guns, pretty standard, seen them many times before. 6 in A, 12 in B, 24 in C. Moving on, we have the Sapoli. Standard Sapoli squads with the two submachine guns, seven SVTs. These are definitely your like best infantry option uh, for more mid-range engagements. And then they have the HE shell for close range engagements. Uh, but you can't bring these in in phase A. You can only bring them in phase A or B, sorry, and C, which is interesting. Then there's the Sapoli Camrotti, uh, which is a three-man squad with Panzerfaust. And then you've got the Strauki Camrotti, but this has a PTRD. And they can't come in any super fast transport, so I'm not really sure how useful these are going to be. Uh, but you get a reasonable amount of them in the later phases at least. Only two in phase A though. The leader options are kind of bad in the infantry tab. You're probably quite reliant on these Avto Comrati in phase A, honestly. The Thoraki Comrati do have smoke which is nice, but just their lack of availability in early game makes, puts me off using them entirely, uh, at least like early on. Let's move on to the tank tab. So here we have uh, the first look at the Sherman in the new uh, DLC uh, with the changes made. Now an 80 point tank, 45% accuracy at 1,500 meter range. So it is outranged by the Panzer IV with the long barrel gun at least. And it's also outranged by T-34 85s, Panthers, Tigers by quite a significant margin. That's 500 meters between a Sherman and a Panther or a Tiger. So I don't know if that's necessarily going to make people stop using them. I think they're still fantastic tanks for infantry support. They've got three machine guns and their HE on their main gun so they rip through infantry at like closer ranges and honestly like the closer range engagements that you have with these kinds of tanks in light cover will continue and the Sherman will dominate in that regard because it does have um, pretty decent accuracy uh, for that range but um, the more expensive tanks the Panthers the Tigers are gonna pop these at range very easily so you've got to be kind of careful with how you use these smoke is going to be so valuable in the new dlc there is a card of the t34 85 comrotti uh, these have 40 percent accuracy extra veterancy on these in phase a makes them 46 percent accuracy but 1750 meter range we've seen it Already, really, with the T-3485s, uh, but yeah, this is the leader variant. You get one card of the 1943 standard variant, and you also get the T-3485 1944s, uh, which have the APCR, and these are forced to come in at Phase B or C. There's only six available in Phase B, but 15 available in Phase C, so definitely pushing you towards choosing these in the late game, which I think you probably would anyway. A support tab NKVD <laughs> we got one card of those uh, you got your Agnemachiki squads these are flamers uh, six of them available in phase 8 uh, there is 50 mil mortars 50 mil mortars are better than they used to be because they can indirect fire so definitely something to think about Maxim uh, these are only 1,000 meter range instead of 1,200 meter range now. So yeah, I think like 50 mil mortars might even be chosen over things like Maxims in most cases, just because uh, they provide that indirect fire support. Um, then there's the infantry gun. Now, this infantry gun does have 1,500 meter range, which isn't too bad actually. Now the way that you're going to have to use these is make sure that when you put them in cover, that they only fire that well they can only see. 1,500 meters range away from them. Uh, so say if you're sat in a heavy cover situation and if you move right to the edge of the heavy cover, anything can see you from like max range. Whereas if you go back into the cover a little bit, things at max range will no longer be able to see you 
and you can continue to engage at 1,500 meters and things can shoot back at you at 1,500 meters, but you won't be like outranged by things beyond that. So that's something you're going to have to definitely do with these infantry guns from now on. Um, we do have four cards available of supply. That's a lot of supply. There is the first of the command units, the motorcycle command. Never really recommend this because it is just waiting to be killed by like a stray mortar shot or uh, a spray from a machine gun or something. Um, the SU-122s are available in this division, that's very nice. They maintain the 2,000 meter range on the HE shells, so good for popping enemy AT guns and support weapons. And their heat rounds only 1,500 meter range, but definitely going to be useful for killing tanks at closer ranges. Uh, there is the combat, which is the like standard infantry commander. Then they have two cards of the ISU. 152. Now these can't come in phase A, they can only come in phase B and C. These do maintain their 2000 meter range on both the AP shells and HE shells. So these are going to be, I guess, an option for dealing with Panthers and Tigers at range, but the accuracy really lets them down a lot. Only 30% accuracy there. And of course, the rate of fire is terrible. So I'm not really sure if that like you would never really try and use these directly against uh, panthers and tigers, especially in the open. But you could certainly try and ambush them with these with this kind of unit, like the ISU-152. Can get the uh, T-3485 combat, which is the uh, the commander as a tank. All right, moving on to the anti-tank tab. Now this is where things get a bit more interesting for maneuver group Fed Yunkin. Uh, you got the VZVOD PTR here. This is your standard. Well, we've seen the VZVOD PTR before in a couple of other divisions, but basically they have three PTRDs and four submachine guns. They also have smoke grenades and HE or and anti-tank grenades. So they're very well equipped for dealing with um, transports, but also heavier units at close close range, and then they can also smoke themselves off, which is really nice. They're also, because they have the four submachine guns, they can do a lot of damage uh, to passing by infantry. Uh, so not something to brush over too much, but I don't really like using them generally because they'll reveal themselves and get themselves killed. You've got to be on the ball with your micro to make good use of these. 35.45mm uh, AT guns are available. Uh, these are only 1,250 meter range now, though. And the APCR is even less at 1,000 meter range. So definitely be careful with how you are using these. Um, you're definitely going to have to like ambush a lot more, drive them closer if you're going to want to go for transport snipes, that kind of thing. Moving on, we've got the uh, ZIS 3s, two cards available of these, three in A, six in B. These only have 1,500 meter range on the main gun and 1,000 meter range on the APCR. So a little bit of an upgrade from the uh, 45. Has significantly more penetration, mind you, on its AP shell. Uh, but yeah, these again are going to have to be used as ambushing AT guns now, which is I think I've said it before, but I think it's like more historically accurate. You're going to have these like lined up in a in a tree line, and you're going to ambush tanks as they come towards you now, as opposed to poking at tanks from maximum range and hoping for like random crits that give them like transmission damage, and and then maybe you get like a lucky armor crack and like one shot a tank from two thousand meter range, which is completely ridiculous, really, when you think about it. But um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how these are actually like used in practice in gameplay. Because uh, you will still be able to like indirect fire with the HE shells. Um, the ZIS 2s, these have 1,750 meter range, 50% accuracy. That's actually not too bad at all. Um, so, definitely going to be a decent choice against medium tanks at range. They do have a 185mm APCR shot, but that can again only be used at 1,000 meter range. 60% accurate though. One star veterancy does put that up to almost 70% accuracy, so 69% there. If you go two star vet, that's like up 15, that's like 
75% accuracy, and then you can go beyond that if you get the three star veneracy. I'm not sure of the exact figure. Do you get the SU 85s? The SU 85s are pretty cool. Um, they are going to be deadly uh, from light cover. Uh, APCR shell is only 1,500 meters, though, so bear that in mind. AP shell, 1,750 meters. 40% accuracy, but the APCR is very accurate, so you're going to want to make good use of that, and I would definitely recommend always bringing in your SU-85s at maximum veterancy uh, with the two-star there. But, you might have seen it already, but uh, let's finally click on it. It's the BS-3, the 100mm AT gun on the Soviet side, and Fed Yun can get them. Very cool. This is a new AT gun. Uh, some people have been saying it's like equivalent to a Pac-43, but it's really not. Um, it doesn't quite have the same penetration. Pac-43s have like 230 millimeters of penetration. Uh, the BS-3 here only has 200 mils of penetration, but it can fire at 2,000 meter range, which is so important for engaging your Tigers and Panthers and so on. So this is going to be a great unit for cracking down on those units it won't be good for dealing with king tigers but it will deal with tigers and panthers it does have he shells as well i'd probably recommend just turning these off because you're not going to want to reveal your bs3s before you've used them to kill an enemy tank the nice thing about tigers and panthers though being 150 points nowadays and 135 points is that if you get one kill with these you're paying yourself off which is really nice you can get 4 in B and 6 in C. If you can hold out till C, it might be worth the extra availability, but honestly, you might have to bring them in a bit earlier to make this division uh, survive. Anti-air. Maxim 4Ms are available. You've got 37 mil cards. These are You've got two of these available. Uh, they don't really come with any super interesting transports, although this is a new transport. The YA-12 little tractor there. Looks cool, that's for sure. Uh, not very practical though, uh, in a gameplay sense. Pretty good off-road speed though. 33 kilometers per hour is pretty much the same off-road speed as every other unit here. Yeah, it's better than the ZIS-5. Not as good as the Stubbecker though, so you probably still use the Stubbecker to bring in the 37s. But yeah, nice little tractor. If they can bring in 85s, that'd probably be pretty useful. No, it can't. <laughs> That's a shame. All right, yeah, the 37. You're gonna probably want to bring in these alongside the 85s. Now the 85s, they have 1,500 meter APCR. It's not very accurate. It's only 35% accuracy. They've got 1,750 meter range on their AP shell, 145 mils of penetration. So these are nowhere near as good as AT8s as long range AT. So do definitely bear that one in mind because at the moment it kind of feels like these AT5s have the same sort of stopping power, I guess, as an AT8 at the moment. Obviously the 88s I think have a little bit more penetration based on their uh, weapon at the moment. But like generally, uh, if this bumps into a medium tank, you're going to pop them at max range. Uh, whereas now, I don't think that's going to happen so much. I still think the 85 mils are going to be like pretty, pretty awful, honestly, against the Axis armor. So yeah, I wouldn't really use these as, as a direct AT like I definitely would recommend uh, potentially with the 88s. Moving on to the artillery tab, got the artillerist here. Uh, these are just your pretty pretty standard artillerist. I was just checking to see if there's any interesting transports. There's not. Uh, Visibod, your standard infantry uh, artillery leader. Two guards of F-22. These F-22s are going to have 1,500 meter range with their AP shell. 40% accuracy, which I think is going to make them actually more reliable as AT guns as, than they used to be. Uh, so you might see these in a more direct fire role. And the HE shells can be pretty good in direct fire as well. 
Uh, these don't have a range here, but I'm going to assume that the HE it, direct fire is the same range as uh, the main gun, as the AP, sorry. Do have some smoke as well. Three cards of 82mm mortars. Seen 82mm mortars many times before, though. But look at this. It's a Katyusha, but it has 82mm rockets. Now, these are smaller than your standard Katyusha. Uh, the normal Katyusha rounds are 132 millimeters, I think. And then you can get, of course, Andrusha rounds, which are 280, I think. Um, I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head. But yeah, this Katyusha, tiny rockets, 48 of them. I think it's like very similar to a Vielfachtwerfer weapon system. Like mounted on the back of a Katyusha. I don't know. It's interesting. Or like mounted back onto, onto the back of one of these um, vehicles at least. I don't think this is called a Katyusha. I think it's just Katyusha's name of the rocket thing. But yeah, I don't know how good this is going to be. It might be nice for like saturation just to keep place pinned. But yeah, we'll definitely need testing. Then we have the SU-76M. Only one card of these available. Uh, decent if you have radios with them. But then look at this bad boy. It's a 160 millimeter mortar. The big old mortar has terrible rate of fire. 5,300 meter range isn't that much more uh, than a 82 mil. It's actually less than a 120 mil. But that has a big bang, that's for sure. Eight damage there compared to the six damage of a 120 mil mortar. If these have radio and they're pretty accurate, I can imagine them being quite fun to use. So I'd definitely check them out. 120mm mortar card, of course. Seen them plenty of times before. There's the 122mm M30. Now this is going to have a 1,500 meter range H or heat round. So. You're going to want to keep it heavy, like deeper in heavier cover than you would before if you plan to use it as an AT weapon, uh, like some divisions kind of rely on at the moment. So like some divisions have 122s in the artillery tab, but they use them as AT because they don't have much other options for heavier tanks. Um, you're definitely going to want to like make sure they're better hidden and uh, kind of ambush enemy tanks as opposed to firing at max range now, because you could get some really nice max range snipes with these before. With the heat round which has 12 damage so it would just one shot enemy tanks there's the uh, a19 122 mils available though two cards of these these are gonna have a full 2000 meter range as a t so in theory you could use your your a19s as direct fire at with 200 mils of penetration which isn't bad at all but I wouldn't really recommend it because their stealth is only good. They will get spotted uh, quite easily uh, before they fire. So, yeah, it's something you've got to be very careful about. And I'm pretty sure that artillery units take more damage from tanks, just as a general thing. Same reason with, like, anti-air. Um, the, the reason that, like, Black 88s and um, 85s, in this case, take quite a lot of suppression from tanks is because there's a modifier that allows tanks to do more suppression against those particular units. Um, then we have the air tab for Fidjunkin. So starting off with the TU-2F recon aircraft. Pretty standard, we've seen these before. Uh, Lag-3 fighter aircraft and really not my favorite fighter aircraft. They lack firepower, that's for sure. As lag 3 with the bombs though, these are only two 50 kilogram bombs, so not ideal. If they were 100 kilogram bombs, I definitely recommend maybe having some in phase A, but since they're only 50 kilogram bombs, it's not really as good. It's more of like a 1v1 thing potentially to pin down individual infantry squads. Uh, there is an IL-2M card available with the 8 82mm rockets. I think these are the lightest rockets that you can get on an IL-2, so probably not a very good choice. 
Still get the front facing uh, cannons though, so that will certainly help pin things down. And there's a 100 point cost SU2. Okay, so this is a recon aircraft with bombs. It has four front facing 762 machine guns. I don't think that's going to be very good at taking down enemy aircraft. It only it does have medium agility though, which isn't too bad. This potentially could be a good choice for spotting and killing enemy AT and enemy support weapons, but definitely going to need some testing because I feel like it's just going to get chewed up by enemy aircraft, like enemy fighters and so on. We'll see. Yak 9T. I'm not sure if this is a new camo, but it looks cool. The red nose there with the white outline. I like the star on the front as well, that decal. Very cool. Three of these available in phase eight, four in B, six in C. They've got a 37mm cannon. Pretty good for taking down uh, enemy aircraft. IL-2 with two 250 kilogram bombs. These are a really nice choice in phase A, actually. Very nice choice. Yeah, these will definitely pop any support weapon and probably kill infantry squads quite easily as well. Get three of them in phase A, six in B, eight in C. Like three with uh, napalm bombs. These smaller aircraft with napalm bombs are never really that good. Uh, the splash of the napalm is just very underwhelming. Fire doesn't spread very well. These don't really do too much damage to infantry, even if it lands on it. Yeah, not a big fan of these. Interesting to see them there, though. Now, we do have a new aircraft here. The Year 2. These are big old bombers, <laughs> that's for sure. Very big. I can't even fit it in the camera. A lovely, like, curved wing shape there. These are very cool-looking bombers. Uh, for 500 kilogram bombs, 115 points each, very good resilience. So the very good resilience means they're going to be uh, surviving that AA quite easily, actually. Up to four of these available in phase C. Uh, there is the two cards of IL-2Ms with 132 mil rockets. These 132mm rockets are good if they hit, but they don't hit very often. And the fact that you only have four of them makes them a lot less likely to hit, which is why they're generally worse than IL-2 anti-tank planes that have more rockets, even though they are smaller. So, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the ones that only have four rockets. You've, they're very rare that they actually like hit the mark properly. Finally, though... We've got the year two with the big old payload. Check this bad boy out. It's got three 1,000 kilogram bombs. Three of them. And not only that, it also has eight 250 kilogram bombs. That is a lot of bombs. That's a big old payload. This will just demolish things. I'm not sure if it would be able to one shot enemy tanks still but that is a lot of bombs so yeah I would love to get one of these over enemy lines and absolutely annihilate the enemy but uh, they are very slow uh, your enemy is going to see it coming they're forced to come in phase C you only get one in phase B and two in phase C yeah that's rough like rough on the availability Rough on the speed. That's going to be very, very difficult to manage. But that's it. That is going to be the last unit in the air tab and the last unit of the division. I don't think there's anything like new in the defenses in any of these ones in particular. I didn't really look at the defense as much in the other ones, but I'm sure some of you guys were curious. Anyway, let's go ahead and build ourselves a quick deck. So, probably going to want to bring in some snipers. Um, probably going to bring in the ones in phase A with the BA-20s. 
Actually, let's do phase B, maybe. No, I can't really make it, so there's like six of them. So we'll just do phase A, B, A, 20s. I'm also going to do uh, phase A, B, A, 10 M's. And then we're going to do like phase B, Kanaya's. In maybe those half tracks, but I probably want to save those half tracks for some infantry. Yeah, probably a better idea. Like the Storaki DT would probably be a better choice for those. Let's bring in these in phase B, interested Beckers. That's fine. All right. Let's have a look. Infantry. So the Sepelli PPSH we definitely don't want. I think I am going to bring these in. I generally don't like two-man squads for leaders, but the fact we get four availability is really nice. Bring them in with their motorcycle. Going to bring in the Storaki DTs in phase A with some half tracks and I think I might also bring them in phase C because you get quite a lot of them. Then phase B will go for some Sapere. I might also want some Sapere in phase A but we can't bring them in phase A so let's go maybe Sapere in phase C or no I probably want to do Straki in phase C. Let's do Standard Thraki in Phase C, so we've got plenty of availability. We'll do Upvetted Phase B Thraki. And I'll do maybe Upvetted Phase A Thraki with some Chernos. But that's going to be all the cards used up. That's really rough. See, I don't know if we're going to be able to get away with uh, having this many cards in the late game. There's not many units that really suit Phase C in this division. The, this division definitely feels like it's not really got a place either, though. Because you wouldn't really want to build it Vanguard, because you miss out on some of like the big boys. Uh, things like the anti-tank, for example, like the BS-3. It's not really good as Maverick. Um, because your phase B is pretty low on tanks, for example. Yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. It might be good as something like a, a V for victory, even. But we'll just keep it balanced for now. I think we're going to have to do... some more Straki in phase A. Let's just unvet those so we got a little bit more availability and I think I'll just bring in another card of Straki in phase A or even the Chernos probably might be better to do something like that it's very low availability of infantry in phase B but the Chernos can get you through phase B as well with that much availability. Yeah, I think that's fine. All right, tank tab. Curious to try out the new M4s. Not sure how useful they're going to be. I'll bring them in up fetted. We're going to bring in the card of T34s. I'm going to bring these in phase A up fetted and then we're going to bring phase C E3485s. Yeah, V for Victory I think would suit this love like really well. Let's go and make it V for Victory. Because you've got two instances here of having a lack of units in phase B. So the Sapley and also the tanks. So I think that might suit it well. Uh let's see. The S ISU 152s again coming in in like phase. B and C. I think these are going to be pretty important to have. So we'll bring in a card in phase B and C. Artillery is certainly going to be prevalent. So going to want to have a supply vehicle. I think in my last division I didn't actually add any supply. So I probably have to like retroactively fix that. But now I think about it. But this division, what do we want to do? And let's go ahead and put the, the commander in here. 
I'm going to use the infantry commander, I think. I um, also would like to use the SU-122s. One, two, Let's come back to that for supply. And we're going to want to have the BS-3s for sure. I will bring them in with the YA because it is just a little bit faster. We're going to bring them in in phase C. <laughs> so risky it's so risky but since we're doing v for victory i think it makes sense su 85 is in phase a we'll do phase b this twos which the beck is and i might do phase a visivod ptrs quite a lot of 80 options here and you've got quite a lot of cards that aren't that expensive as well which is nice for anti-air, we'll do two upvetted 37s in phase A, uh, upvetted 37s in B, and also the 85s. Actually, it might be better to just do upvetted phase C 37s. Upvetted 37s are just very, very strong because they have a lot of like lethality. They will take stuff out of the sky. All right, the metal doors will do. Okay, let's move on to the artillery tab. I do want to try out these mortars. I'll bring them in in phase B. We'll see how we get on with them. I reckon they're going to be quite weak to counter battery though. Uh, what's the strength like on them? Only four. Yeah, that's pretty rough. The SU-76Ms are probably a good choice. We don't have phase B leaders, do we? So let's go ahead and bring in the VZVOD PTRs. We can use them as radios as well for the SU-76Ms. I'll bring some of those in phase A. And then late game, I think we're going to want to use maybe some big 122s. I would also like to try this out. You get four of them in phase C. So let's bring those in. Bring these in with supply. Then we got the air tab. I do want to try the SU-2. Bring in four of those in phase A. Definitely want to try the big years, of course. And I'll probably bring in these years as well in phase C. We got two more points, but I still need to fit in supply. That's rough. It's really rough. Maybe I'm a little overboard on the artillery. Let's take the 122s out for now so that I can fit in um, one more unit of aircraft. Def I think it's going to be the IL-2 bombers. We don't have any fighters though. I don't think it's that important. And then I'm probably going to want phase B supply. It's not going to be enough supply. <laughs> Not for the Katrishas and C, no way. It might be enough to get me through phase A and B with those SU-76s and mortars, but not phase C. Uh, let's maybe take out a card of ISUs and put in a phase C card of supply, because I think artillery is almost going to be more useful than the ISUs in most cases. Actually, let's bring in the ISUs in phase B instead of C. We'll do that. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, uh, Grupa Bed Yunkin. I think it's like, like in Russian, I think it's Fed Yunkina, but uh, we'll just do Grupa Fed Yunkina. That will do. All right, cool. Looks good. I think this is going to be a very interesting division to play. It's going to be a hard division to play. I think it could maybe put out quite a lot of pressure early on, but getting through phase B is always difficult with B for victory. So we'll have to wait and see. And I mean, the division doesn't really have many options in phase B anyway. So I think it suits it well, the V for victory deployment type. You're going to be quite reliant on the BS-3s for like late game anti-tank 
and the uh, T3485s, you do get quite a lot of them. So maybe it won't be too bad. You're just going to have to manage your range with those C3485s because they don't, they still get outranged by tigers and panthers and so on. Yeah. I'm really excited actually to kind of test this one out. I think it's going to be a very interesting division to play. It's it's not like a super exciting division, but these toys like the, the year two and the BS3, it's just going to be super interesting to see how they perform. And whether or not they're going to be like useful, especially like the year two with the big bombs, like it's going to be cool, but will it be useful? <laughs> yeah. All right. Pretty cool division. I like it. Hopefully you guys do too. Let me know what you think in the comments. That's it. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.